You know, before I even look at this, before I watch anything, uh, I always get really, really nervous at these because, well, one, they scare me. Mostly, not because, like, in a bad way, but it's like, you never really, I never really know, like, how much do they know, you know? Because, like, there's certain things people don't know about, or, like, it's not, like, widely known. Like, I don't know, like, let's say, for example, where I'm from, right? Like, I don't talk about that that often. Um, but most people who watch my stream all the time probably know. So it's like, I wonder how niche it is, you know what I mean? Like, how deep does it go? No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying anything bad's in it. No, no, I'm not saying that. Uh, I'm saying, like, you know, I wonder, like, how deep it actually goes, you know? Uh, is it very surface level? Like, is it like, oh, he was good Reinhardt player and Pog, you know? Like, <laughs> you know, I always wonder. I always wonder about these whenever I see something like it pop up. I'm like, how much do they actually know? Anyways... See Even before the tragic failures of Overwatch 2, Overwatch 1 was already on a decline the last three years of its <laughs> Oh no. Oh man. I've been getting Nathan's new one a ton before even the PvE stuff went out. I've been getting... I thought about doing a react to it. I haven't watched it, but... The character that killed Overwatch... Didn't the, the score used to make, like... F the score used to farm these, like, Overwatch's dead videos all the time. Like, they would just... I remember there was like five of them, I think, but... Life. Regardless, one man slingshotted himself to superstardom as the game he played burned and faded around him. The one, the only, Flats. My doctor when I was a... That... Oh man. It feels surreal to have, when someone says, like, superstardom, because I'm only like a... I don't know, when drops are on, it's a little different, but normally I'm like a... Thousand to three thousand viewer streamer, so I don't think of myself as that way. You know what I mean? Also, old angle, clean face, clean shaven. Although the lamp is still there and the fridge is still there in the corner, feels good, man. Small child was actually like evil. She was actually like an evil old witch, dude. The good mercies are like actual F twenty two Raptors, just going. <laughs> Literally took this kid's face and just like slammed it and grinded it on the fence. <laughs> Oh, let's go! I'm actually insane, dude! Let's go! Hey, you know what? If God, these the clips are so old. Y'all the... bullied me for this shirt. I don't even wear this shirt anymore because y'all bullied me and told me it was ugly. And I stopped wearing it. You guys did that. You for Don't forget. I used to have other colored shirts. And then y'all motherfuckers bull me out of them, all of them. So screw you guys. Uh, oh, man. Flats. The wait, wait, hang reason on. why you're here. Get the f Man. Flats, the god tier tank, super chatter, and all around personality is the biggest name in Overwatch today, but four years ago, no one knew his name. So this really begs the question, where did Flats come from? Now for that, we're gonna have to go back, and I mean way back, to April 16th, 1996, Flats was born in Boston, Massachusetts. Now, Flats was raised sheltered, rarely being allowed to go outside. And because of this, he is self-described as weird because he misunderstood social cues from being so sheltered. And because True. Of this, not many people know about this. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Okay, I hope some people might take that as deceptive as like, wait, really? Well, mostly. Okay, they, it's, the story is way deeper than that. And I'm kind of glad they didn't go into it because I've talked to it a little bit, but not really. It was like. It was mostly my mom being ultra protective because uh, she was like, things weren't going well at home and she was afraid like child services would get involved because my dad was like really off the rails at the time. But like, I don't, I normally don't, I haven't, I didn't talk about that for years, but I he talked about that sometimes. So I wonder, I, I wonder if, the, I don't think that's going to be in here, but. Elementary and middle school years, he was bullied, although oftentimes he would not take this lying down at all. Yeah, I'd get bullied, but I, I would, I'd throw, I'd swing, I did, I did not give a. F I had uh, <laughs> this is such old lore. It's true, but it's so old. I had less f**ks to give than anything else. Throughout Flats' childhood experiences, he built a self-described toughness and confidence that he attributes much of his successes to now, later in life. Now, in high school, six-foot-tall IRL Reinhardt Flats literally flattened a kid in a dispute playing football. Oh man, wait a minute, it's the command from my chat. It's not totally accurate. It's slightly not correct. Uh, and we never fixed it. It's not totally correct, but I never fixed it. So I, if they go off the command, it's slightly wrong. 
earning him the nickname Flats, which he stuck with to this very day. Okay, then th yeah, that's fine. That is technically still now, right. Flats ended up. It's, it's technically a little bit more complicated than that, but yes. Actually, going to a top tier business because it goes off of my last name to school and got a degree in business he then used his degree in business to get a job in the overwatch league but once again we're getting way too far ahead of ourselves how did flats even come to play overwatch at all now in the times before his overwatch climbed to high ranks as a notable rhyme main flats was a console player specifically True. a siege semi-pro rainbow six siege is ubisoft's military style shooter LaFlats at the time was not only a semi-pro controller player, but he was known in the community as someone with god-tier controller aim. And True. keep in mind that at the time, controller had zero aim assist. So he True. played versus mouse and keyboard pros and succeeded without any aim assist on controller. They weren't supposed to be using mouse and keyboard. That, that part sometimes goes under the radar. But... Which is actually insanely impressive. And it kind of makes you wonder what would have happened to Apex Flats if that happened instead of a... True! I made the mistake of the wrong game! But I regress. Now, Flats' team at the time constantly edged into making it into Pro League, but internal problems always messed with their consistency. And over time, true. after enough failed attempts, they eventually disbanded and Flats left for something new. He would mess around in a game for about a year called Ark Survival Evolved, but- It, it, for, it actually, and this is the part where I was like, uh, I was a sub on another pro team, but I didn't actually really play. I was mostly, I was almost a more in a coaching role at that point because Blackbeard wasn't good. And I was like, I was the best Blackbeard player on console, but it got hard nerfed and like it became more of a run and gun meta. And I wasn't a run and gun player at the time, but, but that part got left out. But otherwise, this is this is still right. That competitive drive anymore, with Siege being a primarily competitive game and Ark being a game he simply played to have fun and mess around with. True. Now, his friends would start to play something new, and they picked up a game called Overwatch and convinced Flats to pick it up as well. And the first time Flats played Overwatch was on February twenty eighth, twenty seventeen, the day that Ironclad Bastion was introduced into Overwatch. True. you don't know because you haven't pressed that subscribe button, Ironclad Bastion was when Bastion was the most broken character in the entire game. 35% less damage in take form, and he was simply unstoppable. Now, while many people were turtling up with this overpowered Bastion, Flats had a different plan in mind. And I was annoyed that I'm like, a, I'm thought of as like, you know, shit. So I was like, all right, this dude, I'll pick this game up. I'll try it seriously. So I picked it up and that day, the Bastion, uh, Ironclad Bastion had come out. So I played Bastion as basically how soldiers played. Like, but basically I was just walking around the map and then setting up his turret. I played Ironclad Bastion for one week and I went from 1700 to 3k in one week. And True. Like, oh, this game's easy. I mean, now, eventually, talking, though, but, all yeah. of Flats' friends would move over to PC, and they chipped in nine hundred dollars so that they could buy him a PC. He and knows they this. Could play together, which is just wait. A minute. I haven't talked about that in years. That's really old lore. Actually, the coolest thing I've ever heard. But Flats, who was mega reliant on his aim before, his godly console aim was now a bit of a bot on PC. Yeah, that's true. At least true. at first. Yeah. But as Flats started to learn the game more and more and his game sense improved, his aim still lagged behind. As someone who has played their entire life on console, making that swap over is yeah, incredibly difficult. That's true. And in a moment of clarity, Flats would swap his primary role to something that would change his career forever. Ever. True. So I mean, that's how I ended up role swapping is after a full season, I was just stuck high diamond, low masters. I couldn't break it. So I swapped to main tank and I hit GM in a week. Just now back in college, Flats graduated with that business degree and actually got hired as the community coordinator for an Overwatch League team, the Boston Uprising. There are True. even some posts that he made still up on Reddit four years ago, like this one. Quote, hi all, my name is Flats and I'm the community coordinator for the Boston Uprising. Now while the God. ending here is a bit tragic, he did meet someone that was very pivotal to his overall career and development as a person. And while you probably never heard of him Wait. before, he became incredibly close friends with Carq. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Everyone knows Carq and they That's such deep lore. Oh my god. Met when Flats was a community coordinator and they became very very close friends and still are to this day. True. I'm okay, so the way I I don't know if it's going to talk about but the way I met him was at a literally convention 
and I knew he was on the list. So basically, Pax sent out a list of all the influencers or that were going, and I was looking for all the Overwatch streamers because I just had a bunch of like shit to give away, and I didn't want to carry it all the way back to the office. Uh, so I was like basically just messaging people. I was like, hey, if you come by, I'll give you free shit because I don't want to carry it. And Karki, Wanted, and Fitzy came by. And Karki, I mean, sorry, Wanted and Fitzy were a little bit busy with other people. Like, people just coming up to say hi, so I didn't really talk to them. But Karki, I was talking to him for a bit because um, he recognized me from Ladder and was like, you're the tank player, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, we talked for like 15 minutes, had a good time. And then I bumped into him and ranked later. And he was like, you want to play? And I was like, I'm down. Akarku already being a successful content creator and streamer at the time definitely helped Flats find direction through this next hard stage in his life. In March of 2020, Flats was let go as the community coordinator for the Boston Uprising. As someone who's worked a lot of esports jobs myself, this is how it kind of goes. It was right as COVID hit. Primarily being fueled by passion, but when you're let go, it definitely is a very rough point, especially when you don't know if you'll ever get an opportunity like that True. again. Now his friend Karku did give him a small nudge to stream more and make content, and combined yes. with that, I uh, that hang on, I cut, I talked over, but Karku did give him a small yeah, nudge if you'll ever get an opportunity like that again. Now his friend Karku did give him a small nudge to stream more and make content. Yeah, that's true. Karku Karku was the reason I kind of started really streaming. He was like, dude, you have nothing better to do now, right? Like, just go for it, go all in. I was like, right, I'm done. Combined with that idea to pursue content with his marketing understanding that he obtained through his degree in business school, he began to post and create content around his ranked exploits, and oh boy, did he create some content. As a very high-ranked tank player at the time, he would often play with many of the top streamers and players at the time, and they would be very often in many of his videos. Now, just three True. months after Flats decided to pursue full-time content, after getting let go by the Boston Uprising, he became a partner on Twitch. On Twitter, he posted this, quote, I was going to make a tweet all about me. It's but still in reality, my pinned tweet. Video essay. Everyone in the community who has helped it's me. It's still my pinned tweet to this day. From my job with Uprising, and I didn't know what the future held I hope, me. When I made this tweet, Three years ago, I hoped it was something that would always keep me grounded. And every once in a while, I go and take a look at it to try to remember. This is for you. Thank you. Now, for someone that didn't have anything to do with Overwatch at all into the later stages of Overwatch's life cycle, to being part of the community, fired from his primary job, but then being parted on Twitch, this is already an amazing feat. But this didn't stop there. Throughout this time, Flats became known as the Chatter God, walking around in practice range, ranting about anything from balance to his life and anything in between. A unique type of creator that you truly got to know on a deeper level than just as an Overwatch player. Still does! Rank. And through this, he consistently popped off and he popped off hard. He posted this a year after he got let go from his job on Twitter. Quote, one year ago today, I was fired slash laid off from my job with the uprising. Damn. I made a decision that day to chase my dream and start streaming. The support y'all have given me feels this past strong, year man. Thank you so much for letting me live my dream every day. That's still true. That is actually very much still true to this day. Uh, it's probably... It's part of why I get so frustrated with Overwatch, because I love this game, but more importantly, I love streaming more. No offense. Um, and that's why I've been trying other things and doing different diff different types of content and kind of expanding. Because uh, I want to do other stuff, but I also don't want to give, get, give up Overwatch like entirely yet. Like I'm, I'm very close, but I'm hoping something saves me at some point. I hope there's something. I hope Season 6 is actually as good as they say it is. Or implied it is um but yeah that's that's all still true to this day for sure his exploits with 50k subs on youtube hitting 4.6k in overwatch in top 10 and being on the front page of blizzard lawn true holy shit being a six viewer average streamer last year to seeing how much the community has grown i wish i was better expressing how yeah i'm really bad at that to be honest with you um i don't i probably don't say it enough but yeah, hitting 4,600. Actually, I broke this again. It was 4,656 with a bunch of snipers. That was kind of ass. Front page. That was when uh, it was old Blizzard, quote-unquote. And it was really hard to get on the on the launcher. It was actually, like, a really big deal. I mean, it still is a big deal, but, you know. And then the old logo. My my main YouTube was at 50K subs. Wait a minute. Is this when it hits? Is this when the gas pedal gets hit? Oh, man. Here it comes. The good oh, sure. well comes soon. Thank you so much. 
incredible feats, especially at the time when you consider the state of the game. Flats was on an upwards trajectory at the same time that Overwatch was trending downhill, with the majority of the developers actually mobilizing for Overwatch 2. Flats somehow did the impossible, growing at a dramatic pace while the game was slowly dying. Now it'd be at this time that Flats would thank a lot of the people that helped him along the way. Q for being in his corner, J3 for hosting him and giving him a big break while streaming, and Emong for being a mentor and a best friend to him. All True. people that are well known in the community. I can add so many people to this nowadays. It's actually crazy. It's actually crazy how many people I add to this now. Like even from my own team, there's like Retro and Crap who basically are like the goats and the lack of a like this is this is, i mean this in the nicest way but like i swear to god i go like and I, they just instantly appear every time like you couldn't ask for better people and i am probably the worst boss for that right like the amount of times where i'm like hey i need something just like instantly like jump out of a tree they're like all right we're good to go and it's the it is what keeps this shit going you know it keeps the glue together and then i can add other people like seagull and shade and Somnus and you know, there's a lot more honestly. There's a lot more even the ones that I don't really like talk about But like I'm actually friends with a lot of people like that don't really either pop into my stream or you know We don't interact publicly that often um, That are good friends of mine just like mostly behind closed doors off stream like other streamers from overwatch and whatnot and It's not like we don't want to interact. It's just like I already talked to them a ton. It's like I don't need to Perform or whatever and like make tweets and shit about it. You know what I mean? There's no point um but yeah, I, I still feel the same way. Him along the way, and Flats didn't forget it. Now, a few months later, in September of 2021, Flats got signed as a content creator for the Florida Mayhem. Now, True. while this seemed like a really big deal at the time, it was nothing but a stepping stone for what Flats would inevitably become. All this time, Overwatch 1 was on the decline, and Flats was skyrocketing, hitting new peaks in game, new follower Wait, did you and did you see that chat? My follower goal at the time was 79, and we're at 429. Jesus Christ. Hitting new peaks in game, new follower count, and subscriber count. The combination of interesting YouTube content of reacting to bronze, chatter streams, and popping off gameplay just made him rise at a crazy fast rate. Now, it floated like that for a while until Overwatch 2 finally dropped, and Flats was in the perfect position to skyrocket to superstar status. The content strategy like that Flats experimented with in Overwatch 1 was perfected by Overwatch 2. Content started pouring out from everywhere, including many channels, million view pop-offs, like the complete guide to all Overwatch 2 tanks. That took me so long to do. Chad, this was this was the only scripted video I've ever done, and it took me fucking... I, it's 46 minutes, and I cut half of it. I cut half of it. <laughs> it was ridiculous and because I wanted to spew. I, I have like essays based on how much fucking shit that I could I could talk about this type of stuff. But like at some point we got to move on, you know, and very importantly, his consistency, content, uploads, streams. Not only did Flats get very rewarded for being consistent before Overwatch 2 by building a fan base, but he was better prepared to capitalize on the Overwatch 2 hype than just about anyone else. True. Half and that's because of my team. We did a really good job with that, everybody. And followers on Twitch, over half a million subscribers on YouTube, didn't nearly- They didn't even get more Flats. <laughs> we, they missed more Flats, what the f that's where all my variety stuff is. Yeah, I need, I need this, y'all. Gotta, you can't forget about this. I need it. Tube did nearly all of it during a time when Overwatch was actually being written off and falling down. Oh yeah, close channel too. Yeah, you're not wrong. And then finally got a huge boost at the end with the launch of Overwatch 2. But as you know, all good things must come to an end. Overwatch oh, no. 2 developers fall dropped off. the news that skill trees, the MMO-style huge scope of a game that Overwatch 1 died to create is not gonna happen. At least not even close to the pitched version that we were promised back in 2019. Here it comes. For someone like Flats, who stood by Overwatch in the worst of times, it's a hard thing to take. And yeah. honestly, Flats has surpassed his need for Overwatch in many ways. People like me need that subscribe button pressed, and to only generate Overwatch content and pray that it doesn't True. die or go anywhere Press that else, sub. my career probably dies with it. But for Flats, anything he does, wherever he goes, he's going to be a superstar with or without Overwatch. And sadly, according to Flats himself, he's already got one foot out the door. Chat, 
I'm being just real with you. I'm so damn tired. I am really I've tired. Basically, been fighting for shit for this game for the last three and a half years, through the ups and the downs, the goods and the bads, whether people agreed with me or disagreed with me. I think I'm out of gas. I think I'm out of gas. I think that's it. At least there's cool shit coming in season six, but I could see, I probably see myself leaving Overwatch after season six. Play the campaign, play the stuff that we waited years for, play our one time, have our one last trip around the sun or at that point, and then, uh, you can't say same shirt. You bullied me out of my other colors, okay, you little bastards? We head out. We head out, boys. Damn, dude. I'm not gonna lie. That was that was one hell of a way to end that. Man, I wasn't ready to cry today. That was really nice. That was actually kind of sweet.